Okay, welcome back. This is question number four from Mechanics 1, January 2020, International A-Level paper. Here we have a question um, about um, two identical small rings A and B. Now, this is something that you, which I don't recall seeing in an Edexcel paper before. I've seen them in Cambridge papers. So it's something that, um, you know, I guess it's uh, something we have to add to our notes now, I guess, but uh, it's not really too much different, but it's something that I haven't really seen in an LXL paper before. Correct me if I'm wrong. But anyway, two identical small rings, A and B, each of mass M, um, are threaded onto a rough horizontal wire. Okay, so this is the wire, and this is these are the two rings. The rings are connected by a light inextensible string. Okay, they're connected by this light inextensible string, and there is a particle of mass um, particle C of mass 3m which is attached to the midpoint of the string okay so it's attached to the midpoint of the string the particle C hangs in equilibrium below the wire with angle BAC BAC um, beta degrees as shown in figure 2 okay the tension in each of the parts of uh, AC and BC is T is T basically the same tension of course it's basically the same string by considering the particle C, find T in terms of M, G, and beta. Okay, so let's just put some forces and um, a few lines here to show what's going on. We've got the, the mass, okay, which will cause this weight of 3 mg newtons acting straight down. That's from, from the weight of the string. And then you've got the tension in the string which is T. Okay, now we need to know some angles in this and if I draw a line here it will help us to kind of figure out what some of these angles might be. So I'm going to draw a line going across like this. Okay, and um, basically what we can see here that this angle and this angle they both must be the same as beta because of this is horizontal, I drew this line, this is horizontal makes a z-shape, they're alternate angles, so this must be beta and this also must be beta, beta degrees. Okay, so we have some angles here and we have these rings which I'll deal with in part B. Right now I'm just considering this. Okay, so I'm just dealing with the forces that are around this area here. So now, by considering the particle C, find T in terms of mg and beta. So let me just re replicate some of those things we've got. As I said, this line going across that we've drawn in order to work out what this angle is. This is beta, this is beta, this is T, this is T, and here you have 3mg acting down. So if we resolve these forces vertically, okay, you're going to basically resolve this T vertically, it will be T times, now you're going away from the angle, so it will be T times the sine of beta, and again T times, going away from the angle beta, T times the sine of beta, is equal to, straight down is 3mg. So if you want to find T in terms of mg and beta, we can say, alright, this is 2T, sine beta equals 3mg and if you want to find t we have to make t the subject so we have t is equal to um, 3mg over 2 times sine beta okay so that's t in terms um, of mg and beta we found that considering particle c then it says find in terms of m and g the magnitude of the normal reaction between the wire and a Okay, now, you have this ring which is attached. Okay, now, if we consider the forces acting on this, this ring A, okay, you're going to have the tension acting this way. You're going to have the weight of the ring, ring acting down here. Let me, try, let me use a, a line to make it straight. You're going to have the weight of the, the ring acting down here. Okay. Um, and you're going to have the normal reaction force. Now, when two things are in, in contact, 
two different surfaces in contact. Now that's the same for ring. When the ring is in, con in contact with a wire, there will be a normal reaction force. Okay, and the normal reaction force is going to act in this direction here because the tension is acting, kind of pulling it down. So the reaction will be acting upwards in order to keep an equilibrium. Okay, so this is the, the weight, which is mg, and this is the reaction force. Okay, you also have another force because it's an equilibrium acting in this direction, which is the friction. Okay, the frictional force. Okay, that's acting in that direction. Okay, but we don't have to deal with that in part B. Part B says find in terms of M and G the magnitude of the normal reaction force between the Y and A. So if we consider the resolving the forces about this particle or this ring A vertically, you have R acting upwards, and that's equal to, because it's an equilibrium, Mg plus, and you have T times, now you're going away from the angle again, T times sine beta. Okay, now they want us to find the reaction force in terms of M and G. So we don't have a sine beta there, we don't have a T there. So what we can do is, if we look at this equation here, okay, if we just look at this equation here, we can say, all right, let's just put a little line here. We can say that this means T times sine beta, if I just you know, re rearrange this to make T sine beta the subject, it's equal to 3MG over 2. Rearranging that. So I can replace all of T sine beta with 3 mg over 2. So I can say R is equal to mg plus 3 mg over 2 which is going to be 2 mg over 2 plus 3 mg over 2 which is 5 mg over 2. So 5 over 2 mg or 5 mg over 2 that's the reaction force in terms of m and g. So that's R equals 5mg over 2. Okay, now for part C. Okay, so now part C. Um, it says the coefficient of friction between each ring and the wire is 4 fifths. The two rings A and B are on the point of sliding along the wire towards each other. Find the value of tan beta. Now we already have this diagram from the previous question. We know the, the value of T in terms of mg and um, beta, and we know the value of R, uh, the reaction force, in terms of mg. Okay, so that's what we have so far from the previous questions that we might need. Now, it's on the point of sliding along the wire towards each other. That's where we have the, the fa fact that the frictional force here, which is preventing the ring from sliding, has now reached its maximum value. This is now F max. Okay, this is a maximum value of the friction because now the, the, the ring is on the point of sliding um, this way, of course. Okay, so the friction is stopping it, but it's at the limit. Okay, it's at the limit. So now we've reached F max. So we know that F max is equal to mu R. All right, so we, we can say F max is equal to mu, which is 4 fifths times R, which we know from the previous question is 5 mg over 2. So those will cancel here, those will cancel, and you're left with 2mg. So I know that this is 2mg acting this way. So F max is 2mg. So now if we resolve uh, the forces acting here horizontally, okay, we can say that it's in the point of signing this way, you have T times resolving going into the angle, cosine beta, that's acting in this direction, is equal to F max, which is 2 mg, okay, and uh, T cosine T cosine beta equals 2 mg. Now we know also that T is equal to this, 3 mg over 2 sine beta. So if I replace the T with 3 mg, okay, over 2 sine beta, times cosine beta, that's equal to 3mg. Now let's do a bit of manipulation here. Let's cancel out the two mgs. Okay, and let's multiply everything by two sine beta to get rid of the fraction. So I end up with three cosine beta equals, and if I multiply both sides by two sine beta, this gives me four sine beta. Now they told us to find the value of tan beta the value of tan beta. 
Now we know that from um, our, our work in trigonometry that the tan of an angle is equal to the sine of an angle divided by the cosine of the same angle. So here we have the sine of an angle and the cosine of the same angle. So if we divide both sides by cosine beta, um, or cross multiply here, I can say 3 divided by 4, it's divided by 4 as well, is equal to sine beta over cosine beta. Now this does give us tan beta, so we can say tan of beta is equal to 3 quarters. Okay, so the question didn't ask us to find the angle, it said find the value of tan beta. So there we have the answer, tan beta equals 3 quarters. Okay, so this question is kind of newish um, as far as I remember in Excel. I didn't see a question about rings. So it's not really uh, a big deal. Okay, this same um, rules apply. Basically, this ring, there's friction between the ring and the wire. So, of course, there's friction acting. Now, when you've got a situation like this, the wire is pulling down. The tension is pulling down on the ring on both sides here. So, obviously, um, the ring has got a tendency to move, slide along the wire in this direction. Okay, now whenever there's two different surfaces in contact, including a ring with a wire, there will be a normal reaction which always is perpendicular to, okay, perpendicular uh, to the surface here. So this is uh, perpendicular to this wire will be the reaction force. Okay, and it's obviously going to act in this direction because the tension of the wire has a component acting in this direction. Okay, so it of course has to balance out. And the friction here, as this is tendon, this has a tendency to move, if there was no friction it would move in this direction, so the friction is going to be acting in this direction to counter that, because it's an equilibrium. So that's how you deal with these, these rings. Okay, so you have to be careful about such questions. Obviously they're going to start putting these type of questions in the future. Okay, so that's something to be aware of about these rings. Okay, so there's the answer for question number four.